Hey there, Blade fans. Welcome back to this old sword blade reviews. And we have another custom for you today, and it's unusual in a couple of respects. This is a custom by Dirk Pinkerton. You've seen his customs highlighted on my channel in the past. I've got a pretty solid, uh, I guess we call it sub collection of uh, Dirk's knives, probably about a half a dozen or so in various sizes from a very large razor back down to this relatively diminutive pical knife let's take a look at it because i know we've got to get that blade out there and we've got to make everybody happy with that blade it's a unusual one if you're not used to the style of it it is, as you can see, a claw-shaped blade. You can also see that it's um, clearly branded as CPM3V, a very tough, non-stainless steel with lots of hardness, durability, and edge holding ability. And this edge he puts on this is just crazy sharp. If I uh, can think of it before we're done, We'll do a little cutting demo. Now I'm holding it kind of in the wrong way, although there's no real wrong way to hold a knife. But let's talk a minute when I orient it like that about Pakal knives. Pakal, P-A-K-A-L is how we were spelling it in uh, Piketty Tercia Kali. And more recently you see it pronounced Pakal or P-apostrophe, uh, K-A-L as they did with the Spiderco knife. Uh, we're going to talk about fixed blades today, and I do have a number of videos out there on uh, some of the folders in this category. But um, basically, it's a Filipino term meaning to uh, jab or stab or rip or tear. Um, I get a lot of different translations of it. Uh, I even saw a translation recently uh, stating that it was to be mean or angry or indignant. <laughs> Uh, if you're Filipino, I'm sure you can give me a direct translation from the Tagalog language or Visayan language. i um, not sure if it falls into both or not. I don't want to go on and on and on about this, but basically uh, there are two holds for knives uh, in Filipino martial arts. Uh, if I could use this uh, folder right here, this... Uh, what the heck is it? Rat one. <laughs> um, that's a sock sock grip, okay? Point up, basically. And that is a pakal grip. So the sock sock grip is used to thrust and slash, while the pakal grip is used to uh, jab, right? Or stab and rip and tear. Uh, two basic knife positions. They can be used knife alone, knife with an empty hand, knife with a stick, knife with a sword. That's called a spadi daga. But, you know, that's the basic gist of it. Now, the hold for the knife as it was designed is primarily this, okay? And I'll see if I can give us even more room without bringing too many other things into the scene. So... The idea is for the handle to be just long enough to give you four fingers, which it really does, and a little extra ramp there to lie the thumb over. And you can actually bend the knuckle over that last little peak in the handle there. And the action is to do this rip and tear. So the point needs to be in line with the arc that we're thrusting on, right? But this can also be used to flick it out and jab with it. And you notice that he brings the point down so it's more or less in line. Now, there are some knives with the point raised way up, um, and that gets us into the Elvia territory, which this was inspired by. I believe when I show you some of the examples uh, of Dirk's other Pical knives, you'll see that. 
that this is kind of in following with the Ed Calderon style of uh, knife use uh, fashioned after the fruit knife. And you can see if we look at this axis of the handle and we look at this point, it is raised well above the handle. When you actually hold it square in the grip, it's a little less raised, but it's still well above this axis here. That gives you that initial contact with that point. And the other thing Dirk has done with this model is slant that top uh, angle back a bit more than he has done on his Smilodon series that I'll show you in a moment. So yeah, it's a small knife. Let's do some measurements. Overall, tip to tail, six and a half inches, not that big. And about two and a half inches on the blade, depends upon where you measure it. Obviously not the whole blade is sharpened, which is kind of a good thing. We've got about two and a quarter inches sharpened and about two and three quarters right out to there. That does give you a little bit of latitude here so that you don't accidentally place your thumb right on the blade because it can be used in this position. And in Filipino martial arts, we use this circular hooking thrust. Okay, so you can thrust with this knife and rip, right? Also coming in the other way, right? That's called our, our nine and our eight in uh, Piccadilly Tercia. Let's look at some of the other measurements, and then we can get into some other discussion. So 0.52 to 3, it's a textured handle. So if I go on an angle, we'll get an average 0.52. So really not that thick. And you do need something to hold on to with a fixed blade. You don't want it too skinny. 0.12 on the blade stock, which translates to 3.2 millimeters. It does come with a very nice sheath, and we're going to weigh it with the sheath. And you'll notice that Dirk does not put any hardware on his sheath. It's a custom knife. So it's up to you whether you use a DCC clip, a, a tech lock, or um, um, a Nulti clip, or something else, or just drop it in the pocket, although we don't have much of a thumb ramp there to push off on. So we're in ounces, and we've got 4.86. Call it 4.87 rounding up, 4.87 ounces. So under five ounces for a fixed blade, not bad. Well, after all, it is small. We've got it in the sheath, so let's take a look at what he did with the sheath. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six grommets. And that's good if you choose to hang it here as a neck knife, you could do that. The retention is quite good. There's a little bit can hear it of rattle up and down. But, you know, knives are challenges sometimes to get the right amount of hold and what, what are you going to hold on to? This one's holding mainly onto the handle material. So you can see that the way it's formed, it's kind of holding around this initial part here and then a little bit behind. So, you know, you can go wild with your knife designs, but realize if you're a knife maker, you're going to need to accommodate that shape with the sheath. So I was talking about Dirk's other designs, and I put them over here on the side table. Let me grab them. So here is his Smilodon in a single edge, and this is kind of a customized version, a hybrid version of uh, his Smilodon because uh, I don't remember the name of the other knife, but I wanted a larger handle on this one. And so this is kind of a combination of a handle he used previously on another model combined with his Smilodon blade. One thing you see right away is this is the way Dirk was doing his um, Pakal knives. He would raise the axis in a straight line rather than raise it and hook it. So if we get these handles 
that away, you can see the radical difference in the upward angle. So this is not angled, this is raised, so it's above the handle axis. That was the way he approached the uh, Pakal uh, usage uh, setup. And they don't look that much larger, but I've got, for me, with a medium large hand, feels comfortable, very locked in and comfortable in this grip. I mean, this just holds me right in there. And you've still got that point forward and that ability to rip, but you've got a straighter edge rather than a claw style edge. And here is one more. This is a double edge version of his Smilodon blade. You can see on this one, he's still just raising the axis rather than tilting it as we have up here. But it is a double edge. So very similar to this one, but a smaller knife. You can see that we've got just enough handle to hold on to, but it's heavily textured on the flats. I don't know if you can see that. There it is. And they're all very, um, very much uh, full tang knives. Okay, not hidden tang. So we've got a whole different point going on here. We've got more of a reverse tanto going on there or a warning, warn cliff. And you got your two edges here. So with this one, we can cut away and we can cut in. If you choose to hold it this way, again, you got to be careful. You don't want to do that. You can cut just as with a normal sock sock style knife and you can cut up, rip up on the inward stroke. Um, so way different usage on that. The double edge definitely expands out the usage. And now um, if we bring in one more sample of a Pical knife, here is one by Ken Vihikite of Blackrock Knives. It is a chisel grind, so flat on one side and um, ground on the other. So I'll hold it this way so you can see it. Um, so here we have, if I get the Smilodons out of the way, here we have a very similar knife to the ferrule. And I don't think I've even mentioned the name of the knife yet, have I? That is the ferrule, okay, F-E-R-A-L, as in feral hog, feral dog, feral cat, indicating claws, fangs, and a wildness. <laughs> Very similar angle here, though, that the, the approach that Ken took and the approach that um, Dirk took with the feral. I've been doing that a lot lately. I haven't been mentioning the name up front, but it's in the, the thumbnail and it's in the description. So um, Ken's got a little larger knife going on here by maybe about two inches. And this holds quite well. And we've got the bird's beak kind of hook on the end. Very comfortable, bigger handle, um, but very similar approach with the blade. Maybe uh, slightly less hooked, but about the same angle of being raised up above the handle axis. And um, can make some excellent sheaths, by the way. Some of the best custom sheaths out there, I think. If we do a quick size comparison to a standard folding knife, a griptilian, you can see that it's actually smaller by oh a good amount. By how much? Smaller by like an inch, inch and a half. Yeah, about an inch and a half longer. And blade about an inch longer. When it's closed, naturally the folding knife is going to be smaller. So there is some argument for a folding knife. Argument for the fixed blade, you grab it, you've got it in your hand immediately, doesn't need to be opened. And we don't need to worry about any weaknesses in the pivot. 
Now, how sharp is this baby? Well, it's designed to penetrate, rip, and tear. So, effortless on the entry. Absolutely effortless. How about the edge by itself? Also, very sharp. Yeah, I mean, it's right in there for aggressiveness. So you've got an extremely useful point and you've got an extremely sharp edge once that point has started the work. Well, there you have it, the Feral, a new design by Dirk Pinkerton. And he's gonna be turning out more of these. He's gonna be going more in this direction. He's even thinking of at least temporarily doing nothing but pecal knives. So look for that. I'll give you a link to Dirk's Instagram page. And uh, that is the way to contact him if you are interested in anything that he either has or you would like him to build as a custom knife. Kudos to Dirk Pinkerton and uh, this new model. I hope that he does well with it and that uh, a lot of you folks out there might be interested in it. Be back with you soon. This old sword signing out. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe.